I think many colleagues and friends, along with myself, were shocked and saddened by the untimely and tragic death of Dr. Peter Fisher just four weeks after he kindly accepted my invitation to chair the afternoon session, the New Horizons Water Science International Seminar in July. It was a very unique occasion, commencing with the dinner at the House of Lords and a hugely successful scientific conference the following day to support global homeopathy. I was delighted that Dr. Fisher was able to participate so prominently at this event and to be able to introduce the celebrated Nobel laureate, Professor Luc Montagnier. Peter was a special person, admired and loved by his family, friends and colleagues. He was an internationally recognised expert advocate for homeopathy and more than that, a highly skilled clinician and researcher. Since Dr. Fisher's passing, both myself and the New Horizons team wanted to put together a memento of the time he gave at our seminar. In watching the footage, I could see that he was both elated and on form, and most of all, dedicated to his beloved homeopathy. I hope this is the way that we will remember him best. Thank you all for coming, and welcome back after lunch. We have a packed agenda. I'm afraid we're going to overrun a little bit. I hope nobody's in a terrible rush to get away. Um, we have added... Just at the beginning, we'll have Roger Harabin from BBC News, who wants to just make a brief announcement. And uh, at the end of the afternoon, uh, before the panel discussion, we have also included Jayesh Baleri, who is from the Indian Institute of Technology in Mumbai. He's done some, some of you will be familiar with his important work. So just before we get started, let, let me just you know, introduce what we're talking about. It seems to me that where we're starting from is it doesn't work because it can't work. Homeopathy doesn't work because it can't work. This is a quotation from somebody actually I admire greatly, Colin Blakemore, who was for many years the uh, chief executive of the Medical Research Council, actually taught me physiology at Cambridge, an inspirational teacher, uh, and not prejudiced against homeopathy, just thought, you know, it just can't possibly work because there's no understood mechanism of action. But of course, water is a very anomalous substance. Uh, Gerald Pollock showed us just before lunch some amazing features, but there are others that are more obvious, you know, that, that are matters of common observation. For instance, it's a liquid at room temperature. It shouldn't be, according to its molecular weight. Hydrogen sulfide, smelly gas, and we used to take great delight when we were in, in chemistry class when we were 17 or 18 years in, in disrupting it by generating hydrogen sulfide absolutely stinks, got us into terrible trouble with the, with the chemistry teacher, uh, but it seemed worth it at the time. Um, so, uh, and the other, another one that you can observe for yourself, sorry, I'm just having a small problem here. Yeah, another thing you can observe for yourself, of course, is that it reaches its maximum density in the liquid phase rather than the solid phase. Ice forms on the top of a pond, not at the bottom. Another very unusual property. And a huge number of other properties, uh, as, uh, you know, more, some of them are more, more recent. And people who say to me, well, it can't work because it doesn't work, I say, well, look out the window. The Earth is obviously flat and static. It's perfectly bloody obvious. What are you talking about? <laughs> and that's what people believed for most of human history until 500 years ago, roughly. It was believed that the Earth was flat. People were burnt at the stake. Giordano Bruno was burnt at the stake in 1600 in Rome, uh, by the Catholic Church for suggesting, for, for proposing, for well, supporting the heliocentric theory of the universe. Uh, sometimes we homeopaths feel that you know, we're in the same position, but I don't think we're going to get <laughs> burnt at the stake, so there is some pro progress in history. But that's not my point. That is not why I'm making the point. Because actually, many ancient civilizations, all ancient civilizations, in fact, had detailed knowledge of the movements of the heli heavenly bodies. The Maya, the Egyptians, uh, India, and Chinese, you name it. They all had detailed understanding of the movements of celestial bodies, which they used for all kinds of pra agriculture, pra uh, agriculture, navigation, uh, ritual purposes, astronomy. They knew how these bodies move. But nobody, until the, the liberation, the intellectual liberation of the European Renaissance, nobody thought about it. It just doesn't, the Copernicus, it, it, it just doesn't make sense how, you know, we, it, these observations do not fit together unless the Earth is indeed spinning on its own axis and moving around the sun. Um, and water, if you think about it, is ubiquitous. Water, life is inconceivable without water. Um, and you know, they, they say there are two kinds of mistakes. One is too small to see, the other one is too large to see. And I think with water, this is 
too large, it's too large and too close to us to realize what a big problem we're confronted with. People like Gerald Pollock, and we will be hearing from, from other people um, about that. Uh, so what we need and what is emerging today are new models to understand the, 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 the structure of water and which in the process may very well vindicate homeopathy, show it its mechanism of action. And what we desperately need is you know, methods to assay that because you can have hypotheses, but they're not much use unless you can test them. So thank you all for coming. I'm sure we're going to have a very interesting afternoon.